This week on Wanderlust, come join me on a personal journey through a land of mystery and intrigue. Baja California! Baja California hangs from the west coast of the U.S. like an 800-mile-long icicle. Yet there is nothing icicle-like about this sun-scorched peninsula of desert and mountains and thousands of miles of unspoiled coast. Nor is there anything icy about the people and their culture. The traveler will be immediately impressed by their warmth, wiry spirits and quiet nobility. They live in a simple, unheard world free from fax machines, copyright litigation, and leash laws. Hitchhiking is a great way to immerse yourself in Baha's hot, dry, lonely soul. But let's not be naive, the price is right. But most importantly, traveling by some lets you meet the people of Baja on their own terms, as true individuals, with their own attendant charms and foibles. I don't swing that way, pal! Local tradition, my ass. Although it was totally out of my way, what better place to begin my journey is in Conception Bay, where the Sea of Cortez teems with a wide variety of fishes and eels. What a majestic thrilling undersea world is out below the surface. I saw an explosion of colors and fishes and myriad wide variety of spectrum colors as a coral. What does it all mean, King Neptune's marvelous playground of creation? No one knows the answer, but what a rush! Ensenada was once a sleepy fishing village, now a booming toss mecca, where folks go ape for the shopping. The conspicuous consumer can satisfy his every whim and or desire. Vicky, Terry, Ruby, Jose. I don't see the name Gerhardt. You have uh, Ger Gerhardt. Handicrafts, ceramics, whimsical ethnic figurines, and gory religious icons. The Sami traveler learns to distinguish between the chintzy junk wants a genuine masterpiece. But don't make the mistake of paying the vendor's full asking price, which is considered an insult to the beloved local tradition of haggling. Furthermore, paying full price makes the peddlers lazy and complacent, while a good spirited round of haggling provides excellent stimulation for their young minds. 180 for two. One dollar each. It's ridiculous. You want to be a good businessman? How about one of these for 50 cents? For this, it's a turtle with a moving turtle. What is this? You cannot go lower. Two. So this ritualistic squabbling, the vendors and I haggle our way to mutual friendship and a grudging respect. With one glaring exception. The man they called Froggy. His beguiling foam rubber iguana toys with their realistic wiggling tickled my fancy and spoke to the child in me. But he refused to play ball. How much is it? Oh, two dollar. Two? Two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No more, no more. No. Uh, only two dollar. <laughs> yeah, one dollar? No, two dollar, man. No. Two for this? It's one dollar. It's fair. This is mad. I love this. I love it. One. You're killing me! This is madness! I, I cannot! I can't! No. I can't do it. I wish it was possible to shrug off this man's casual cruelty. I wish it was. I really do. 
Attention all seafood lovers! If fresh fishes and shrimps is your bag, then don't walk. Run to Ensenada. And here at the Mercado de Mariscos, or the fish market, where the bounty of the sea is iced and sliced. Red snapper, grouper, flounder, haddock, prawns, shrimps. If it swims, it's here. And surrounding the fish market are restaurant stalls, where hungry diners can sample the fruits of the sea and are serenaded by wandering minstrels. A wide variety of shellfish basking in the hot summer sun is usually a recipe for disaster. For me, however, I'm blessed with an iron stomach. And down the hatch. Strong taste. There was good news at the Hotel Calafia. The proprietor offered me a great deal on a shared room with a longtime tenant named Smokey Joe. incessantly mutters to himself. Oh, yeah. I think so, old queen is half mad with syphilis. I use the next day to rest, because when Gerhard Renke's Wanderlust returns, I will explore Ensenada's world-famous nightlife. <laughs> if partying tonight away is your bag, then make a beeline to Ensenada, with the streets are overflowing with revelers of all ages. What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Who <laughs> the Lord is this clown? What is a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Go party, go shake your booty! <laughs> What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Uh -huh. <laughs> The night would not be complete without the taste of tequila at Husong's Cantina. Found in the 1800s by the Husong family, the pub served mostly ranchers and miners. Well, they had served miners, all right. Mostly is the kind under 21. How are you doing? Very well, and you? Take it easy on the mic. You like it here in Mexico? Zip it! These nighttime streets are teeming with all manner of life and exotic rituals. Like the Tocas Electricas, a game of machismo with the player's manhood is tested by his or her ability to grip two live electrodes. I give this a try, the electric shocks. Yeah. Ah. The player's social status what? rises with the number of votes, what? causing to his or her flesh. Mas. 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 Proving one's machismo has its price. In my case, temporary cerebral paralysis. One more time. But soon I was back on my feet and dancing the night away. La Bufadora is one of the world's most popular blowholes. Maybe too popular. Let's not be naive. The pass to the blowhole is as beaten as a rented burrow. True, the beauty was stunning with the magnificent interface between jagged rocks and turquoise ocean. But was it a genuine geologic wonder or a tourist trap? Determined to find out, I joined the expecting throng. The surf lapped rhythmically against the glistening fissure as we awaited the next briny emission from the blowhole. As the seconds of delicious anticipation ticked by, it became impossible to deny that the moist air was pulsing with an unspoken erotic charge. So, is this your first time to the blowhole? That was good. That was worth the three-hour trip. Also, it's tempting, never lean too far over the edge, because every year, thousands of tourists fall into the blowhole. Blowhole.
hold, blow 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 hold. Fortunately, they are spat back out, usually right where they fell in from. This good waves year round, Punta Eugenia has a reputation as a surfer's paradise. In my life, I've been blessed with the ability to realize almost all of my dreams. But the dream of surfing had heretofore eluded me until now. I've never been so alive. With, uh, every nerve is tingling. Woo! Bloodthirsty conquistador Hernan Cortez was the first European to set foot in Baja in 1512. In his wake came the Spanish missionaries, who left a vast cultural and archaeological legacy, like the mission ruins in San Vicente. San Vicente Ferrer was the third Dominican mission constructed along the Camino Real. Friars Miguel Hidalgo and Joaquin Valero founded it with the authorization of the governor, Felipe de Neve. It was one of the few Dominican missions that did not have to be relocated. It was strategically situated in the center of the route between Loreto and the Alta California and the route that would connect with the outlet of the Colorado River. The largest population sighted was 317 Indians in 1787. In 1833, what an awesome feeling it was to walk amongst these ancient walls of adobe. They were literally tripping with mystery and intrigue. Soon I fell into a reflective mood. Why did I not buy that iguana? Man! One second, I'm checking out the room. Here's a tip. Before purchasing a room, give it a once over with this, the Stink Finder. Designed by the folks at Stink 3, the Stink Finder reveals sources of biological contamination and helps you identify them with this handy key. Just turn it on, scan the bed, and the stains will appear like magic. Let's see, blood, urine, vomit, semen, feces. Jesus Christ, who's staying here, Bill Clinton? Thanks to the Stink Finder, I was able to get this room for a substantial discount. When Gerhard Reinke's Wanderlust returns, I go into the desert for a vision quest. Once a sleepy fishing village, San Felipe is now a winter vacation spot for Mexican nationals and gringos alike. You can go sailing, sport fishing, get an authentic Mexican tattoo, or enjoy a meal of fresh shrimps. I meant in the summer, when prices are slashed due to the dangerously high temperatures, when the most popular pastime is beating the heat by whatever means necessary. But neither the tourism or the suffocating heat can stifle San Felipe's authentic Baja culture. <laughs> What these men are doing right here, there is no word for this in English or German, but in Spanish, this word is called musica. Thank you, that was great. I did not pay three dollars US to be devoured by fleas. Wretched vermin. Heartless bitch. Silver! Behind me is the Mission El Descanso, founded in about 1817. The Dominican friars and the Indian converts shared a remarkable spirit of brotherhood and generosity and lack of pettiness in their dealings. While by and large the spirit of sharing is reflected in the current culture, let's not be naive. There are still those who cannot see past their petty refusal to strike a reasonable bargain and whose short-sighted greed, avarice and lack of fair play prevent a transaction that would be fruitful for both parties. Something was eating me. I needed to get further off the beaten path. I needed to keep it real. So I traveled to San Borja, a dusty hamlet named after the patron saint of shelving. Wandering through this time-forgotten village, I felt a touch of magic in the air. 
Everywhere I looked, there were animals of every stripe. Spears and town folk. Mexico! And delightful eccentrics. Like Ramon, a man who loved to pretend he was eating hot peppers. It really looks like you're eating. As convincing as his pepper eating act was, it was nothing compared to the bombshell he dropped next. He told me of a shaman who lived in the nearby desert. This was exactly the sort of mystery or intrigue I was after. Everywhere I went, when I asked of this shaman, people's eyes lit up, effusive with praise. Finally, I got a hot lead on the shaman's whereabouts, which set out for the desert, resplendent in a traditional sarape. Day turned to night, and then back into day. And then, among the ancient cardone cactuses, I found the medicine man. He spoke in riddles. And in his hand, he held a plastic chicken foot. And when he revealed himself, in his eyes, I saw the wisdom of the ages. He presented me with the sacrament that was like a key to the latch on the door behind which lay the secrets of the cosmos. I later found out it was the dried out dung of a peyote eating desert goat. Once the shaman went to have a piss, I began to see the world anew, as if it was the eyes of a child. Don't go away. Gerhard Reinke's Wanderlust will be right back. Oh. The next day I awoke in the blistering heat. The shaman was long gone. And so was my kidney. I sallied forth into the merciless desert, trying to glean meaning from these strange events. I've headed up to here with this miserable, dried out turn of a country. Every Mexican man has a stupid mustache to prove how macho he is. But then again, every Mexican woman has a mustache too. Go figure. These are not people. They are beasts. What I would do for a drink of water, I would drink the sweat of Patrick Ewing. I would drink the urine of an asparagus addict. I would suck the moisture out of a peep show janitor's mop. Oh, my ankle. How much was the water? Uh, six pesos. With my last gram of strength, I made my way to a local physician. Dr. Luis gave me a thorough exam on some unexpected news. Yes, my friend, you were the victim of organ bandits. But after they opened you up, something must have spooked them. For they ran off without taking your kidney after all. No it's problem. no big deal. It happens all the time. I advise you to rest, drink plenty of fluids, and avoid the spicy foods. With a jaunty poke of his index finger, Dr. Lewis had given me a new lease on life. I knew exactly what I had to do. I made a beeline to Ensenada to take care of some unfinished business. Thank God! Thank God! Me! Me! Oh, oh my God!
Incredible as it seems, I found my redemption in the form of a foam rubber iguana. And that, my friends, is well worth the two dollars US. And now I jump. Yes. I saw many things on my trip to Baja. I saw the good Baron Ugly. But the best part of my trip to Baja. But the shame and did not steal my kidney. I bought the iguana in Ensenada. Man named Froggy sold Joel, him to me. You're killing me. Woo! I learned the iguana in Ensenada. The best things in life are not free. See you next week. Bye-bye. Yokozuna!